In this video, we're going to get GPT-4 to write the function definitions for the tools for cloud to use these tools. Let's go ahead and run it. I already have created one, which is extracts important names extractor, which was created automatically. So I'm just going to here say no, because do you want to create a tool schema? We already have one and now we will create a new one in any way. So now cloud is working with that schema, which is this schema which takes in this text, which is Srinivasa Ramanujan's the famous mathematician life story, just a little bit. And it's supposed to extract the, what is it supposed to extract? Let's see, important names extractor. Recognize names, type of, recognize names and a numerical value attached. And this is our response from this text, which is the first bit of Ramanujan's Wikipedia article. Obviously Ramanujan is the most important person. And it has picked it up and it gave it the highest importance. J.H. Hardy, which was the mathematician who invited him to London, I believe, Cambridge. Second, University of Cambridge is the third importance, Royal Society, Trinity College, Hans Eysenck, and Ramanujan Journal. So this worked, right? But we already had that definition. By the way, these code files will be available at my Patreon. We will also review it in this video. So let's run this again. But this time, let's actually, let's create a schema. So we are doing function calling with Claude, but we are going to create the schema ourselves. Let's ask for a short summary and uh, three important facts as a list from the text. Uh, we are actually using this text as a, so we are using tool calling in this instance as a, a structured output. So we are not actually calling any functions, but you can, if you like, just as well. So if you were to say this, it's, GPT-4 is creating a definition, text summary and facts extraction tool, creates a definition, summary and important facts array. And then this uh, script as asks us if you want to use the schema, let's say yes, uh, why, and let's see how it goes. We, we can't we can stream, I would like to stream Claude's responses, but the cloud responses with tool calling is not allowing the streaming currently, but I guess one thing to notice is that when you do function calling with Claude, you get a thinking portion of the response. You can read right here. And then the tool response. In any case, this is the response that we got. Sir Nevoso Ramanujan was an Indian mathematician who made significant contribution to mathematical analysis. And here are the important facts. So this is interesting, this work. Let's try, let's try another one. Uh, so this is a single run C script. So it doesn't repeat itself, but you can surely make it so. Do we want to create a tool schema? Yes. Let's let's try something interesting. I ask for extract word lists for words beginning with A, B, and C. Now it's creating a word list extraction tool, and it's creating a word starting with A, array, B, and C. So this this looks promising. Let's go ahead and say yes. So this is really arbitrary. We are really aiming to create a function definition, which is going to extract all the words which start with A, B, and C. In this case, let's see if this works. Okay, we got a response. And actually it's interesting to read the thinking process. We'll, we'll take a look at the response and this actually worked, but look at the thinking. The tool provided, the word list extracting tool takes a text input and extracts words starting with the letters A, B, and C into separate lists. So it's pretty reasonable. I think there's some, other maybe conclusions to be drawn from this. Nevertheless, here we have the words starting with A, B, and C. I'm not sure if this is entirely accurate, but at least our schema worked. So we will be reviewing the code, and of course you can download it from my Patreon. The link is in the description, but let's, let's try another schema just for fun. We are of course gonna say, do you want to create a tool schema? Yes. Let's just give a really ambiguous uh, description for a tool, a tool that depicts the given text as a sci-fi story. And we are using the OpenAI Unified just to simplify things. If you'd like to know more about it, you can always watch my OpenAI Unified video, which is right here. You can find it at my YouTube or at my website, echohive.live. Link is in the description. So we have a function definition. It's a sci-fi storyteller. This tool takes a piece of text, text and reimagines it as a science fiction story. And then properties, sci-fi story. This looks good to me. So I'm actually surprised how well this works. So maybe some of you will ask, well, why didn't you let Claude to generate the function definition? The reason is number one, because GPT-4 has JSON mode. So it's you are guaranteed to receive a JSON output and function definitions are JSON. 
Also, I will. I believe. I believe in this as aspect, uh, GPT-4 performs better for for JSON output. Even Claude will actually fail at uh, producing the exact schema even during the function function calling phase. Okay, so we got a sci-fi story. Let's see what it says. In the distant future, on planet Aryabhata, Aryabhata a young savant named Sri Ramanujix revolutionized the field of astro-mathematics despite having no formal training, which Ramanujan didn't. Raised in the slums of New Chennai, Ramanujix developed groundbreaking theorems in complete isolation. His work was so advanced that the leading mathematics, mathematicians of Aryapata could not comprehend it. Desperate to find someone who understa understood his genius, Ramanujix began a subspace correspondence with the professors Hardy of Camber Cambridian University on Earth. So this is really interesting. This is the same story told from sci-fi perspective. Recognizing the extraordinary nature of Ramanujic's work, Hardy arranged for him to travel to Earth at Cambridium. Yeah, this is really interesting. It's also it's a great story. There's actually a movie about this too called uh, A Man Who Knew Infinity, I believe, something like that. But that's enough of that. Let's take a look at the code. Before we continue, I'd like to mention the latest release of other streamer, version 3. It said you can view the video and what it does at autostreamer.live, but it allows you to learn and teach anything on demand, live stream educational content, and build deployable course websites. Take a look if you're interested. So for our code, we are going to use OpenAI Unified. And like I said, you can always watch a detailed explanation of it at the OpenAI Unified API. But essentially, instead of writing everything from scratch, I have some methods that auto automate, like trimming history, stuff like that. So uh, we are importing it and initializing with our OpenAI and Anthropic keys. And we do ask the user if you want to create a tool schema, because at the end of the day, when we create a schema, we are saving it to uh, tool definition.json. You can actually write your own schemas right here, or maybe let GPT-4 generate, generate one and then modify it. If you say no at this phase, let's actually run the code and see it happening while we review it. You see, it asks, do you want to create a tool schema? If you say no to here, then we'll skip this entire step. And we will skip it, but we will actually load tool definition.json. So if you have a schema in mind, then you can input it here. But otherwise, if you say yes, then we get to reinitialize the tool definer with GPT calls with uh, some history, because you can actually have multiple turn conversations. And we have a system message, which gives it an example definition of a tool and plus an example on how to create it. And then when we enter a while loop, if you say yes here, right, it's going to ask us to enter a tool description, which is this thing right here. And then we will get a tool definition. We will write it to tool definition.json. This is a GPT-4 defining the tool. And then we'll ask the user if they like the schema or not, because you can review it in this file. If there's anything wrong with it, you can change it. You can also modify it at this stage. For example, let's say, just a summary text and let it let, let it write a schema now that we've got a simple text summarizer we can review it we, you can modify it and then when the script asks you do you like the schema right here if you if you just want to modify and go ahead with it you can say yes and then it will reload it from the file so you have a chance to up, update it but if you say no and it is still in its memory. So you can say, let's just say no. And I would, you can say, I would like to add a list of keywords as well. Let's say keywords. So it should rewrite the schema with summary and keywords. We can review it. Okay. And if you like it, we can say yes. And if I were to say yes right here, then we'll create a list of tools, which is which this script works with only a single tool and it's really designed for and structured output, but you can modify it to actually call functions as well. We are loading a text, text uh, which is the Ramanujan Wikipedia text uh, briefly. You can also modify this. And then we're making a call to Opus and uh, I'm adding a system message to say that you must always use the tool. Because in, with GPT, you can actually uh, instruct the API call to use a particular tool. If you allow Opus to choose, it makes, I, really, I feel like it makes more mistakes. So I said that, and I also said it in the user message, you must always use the tool provided. 
and uh, I'm providing you the text. If you want to modify the functionality, you would, of course, change this. Maybe you want to take in user input. And then we print the thinking response part of it. And then the tool usage. So if I were to say, yes, use this, then it will read this text and send it to Cloud API to return a structured output based on the schema, which was written by GPT-4. So here in a moment, we'll see it. Okay, this is what we got, a summary and keywords. We can view it here better because we are saving it to file at the end. Right here, tool response. This was a summary plus some keywords, which you can actually use later. So this is it. I hope you like this and I'll see you in the next video.